Travel across America with me. You just never know where I might be popping up. Underground bound at Stratica. There are cars driving on top of our head. Well, not on top of our head, but 650 feet above us. You can't think about the fact that you're 650 feet below ground, and you can't think about the fact that there's only one elevator. We are in Hutchison, Kansas. I've been wanting to go to this place for many years, and we finally made it. There was a lot of trash down there, kind of interesting, and we even saw a commode. Stratica. Kansas Underground Salt Museum. This is going to be a very unique experience and you'll want to hang on because you will not believe we go on a tram ride, a dark train ride, you will not want to miss about the underground storage. That was the most captivating part of the entire tour to me. They're closed on Monday and they're open 9 to 3. Tours start I think every 15 minutes or so just depending on demand. We got there a little before 1 o'clock on a Tuesday. As you walk in, you'll begin to see the displays. They are lined up primarily along the walls, and of course, there's raw salt. This is one of the eight wonders of Kansas. You buy your tickets here. They do have the Salt Safari Shuttle. It is a one-hour trip beyond the Underground Museum boundaries. You will see the raw mine as it was left 55 plus years ago. We didn't do the Super Duper one, but the Dark Train Tour and the Tram Tour, they were more than adequate on seeing the underground salt mine. You will find out soon how you know if someone was on this special trip or not. Okay, it's a quarter till one. We have 15 minutes. This is the home of Carrie's Salt. Iodized salt. Evaporated. Emerson Carey opens the Carey Salt Mine. Emerson Carey lived from 1923 to 1992. In 1959, the Carey Company leases space to the newly created underground vaults and storage. That's the part that I wanted you to hold on for. In May of 1961, an issue of Carey Company magazine announces that visitors will no longer be allowed underground. In 1992, after changing ownership several times, the Hutchinson Salt Company purchases the mine. During June of 1999, representatives of Underground Vaults and Storage, Reno County Historical Society, and Hutchinson Salt Company discussed the development of a museum focused on salt to be called the Kansas Underground Salt Museum. It's the vaults where you will not believe what I'm going to be showing you. The mine is now home to these separate entities, a salt mining company, a museum, and a storage facility. Between 2004 and 2005, digging of the elevator shaft begins in April and is completed in November of the same year. In December 2005, the elevator is used for the first time, and we will be riding the elevator. It was completely dark. You couldn't see your hand before your face, so there was no reason to film. Phase one of the construction of the museum and visitor center began in in 2006. I'm setting this all up because this is a tremendous place to go. And you need to know a little bit of the backstory, don't you? The Kansas Underground Salt Museum opens to its first visitors on May 1st, 2007. At ground level, if you start digging outside of Stratica, well, they'll probably fuss at you if you try to start doing that, you will first encounter a layer of topsoil, followed by sand and gravel, and then clay. The clay will eventually become shale. At about 100 feet down, gypsum is found. It is an evaporative mineral, meaning it is formed by the evaporation of water. And at 200 feet down, you'll hit soft shale. Shale is a sedimentary rock formed by pressure, compacting the clay and silty clay into a rock. And at 400 feet down, salt is found. It's roughly found between 400 and 650 feet. The Hutchinson salt bed underlies about 17,000 square miles and averages about 250 feet thick. This is a piece of the red salt in shale. Salt is found between the layers of the shale and you can see in the specimen the layers of shale are becoming thinner and the salt layers thicker. At 600 feet down, salt is mined. Salt is mined here at between 625 and 650 feet deep. At this layer, the salt is about 99% pure. We still have a few minutes, so we continue to peruse the visitor center. Paintings, samples of salt. We found this collection of different grades of salt. This one at the front says treated medium road salt. And we found that a great deal of the salt that is mined here goes to the city of Chicago for use in, on the roads and highways during wintertime. And we found this model, and it was commissioned to demonstrate the process of the hoist and equipment used to sink the shaft. We found on this wall quotes about salt. 
and here are a few. Where would we be without salt? Uh, not too tasty most of the time. Salt is the only rock directly consumed by man. It corrodes, but preserves, desiccates, but is rested from the water. And I want to mention that we did go to Salt Array in the valley, and we did a video on that where we learned that salt was king, and this salt down in the valley was claimed by the king because of its treasure, because salt was considered money at different times in world history. Ye are the salt of the earth, Matthew 5.13. No man is worth his salt who is not ready at all times to risk his body, to risk his well-being, to risk his life in a great cause. Theodore Roosevelt, one of my favorite presidents. A man must eat a peck of salt with his friends before he knows them. That's funny. This was written in the book Don Quixote by Miguel de Cervantes. All right, back to those eight wonders of Kansas. We've been to Monument Rocks and Castle Rock, and now the Kansas Underground Salt Museum, the Cosmosphere, check, and check to the Eisenhower Presidential Library and Museum, and check to the Tallgrass Prairie Preserve. Looks like we've got a couple more places to see in Kansas to make it a perfect eight. Remember, our tour starts at one. I think we go straight through that door. We've got five minutes. Here's an old picture of the Cary Salt Rock Salt Mine, located at 3300 East Cary Boulevard. This picture was taken in 1930. This map shows the underground vaults, Stratica and the Stratica Safari area and the different mining areas through the decades from 1920s to today. It's one o'clock, 650 feet straight down. Kansas Underground Salt Museum, here we go. We went through those doors. Our first tour guide asked us to watch this quick video. You will learn about salt, how it's mined, and what it's like to be a salt mine. This was hanging on the wall. Incompetent slug assassins. Kind of cute, don't you think? Have you subscribed yet? If you're enjoying all my different travel videos, I would be appreciative if you would subscribe if you haven't yet. And if you have, thank you. You've got to be kidding. We have to wear a hard hat? The guy said that one size fits all. There's a screw down thing that it screws it down into the back of your head. Okay, we're going to have to wear this thing the whole time. Yikes. We were able to peer through this window, and the next thing, we're going through another door. I would love to return this hat. I've only had it on a few seconds, and it's like, yikes. That's the elevator that we're going on. He's got to register everything and count how many visitors are that will be traveling on the elevator 650 feet down below surface. And look, it's one o'clock. We're all on time. Okay, all aboard this um, very um, bulky elevator. I think there were 13 or 14 of us that crammed into this thing. It wasn't too bad. It was dark. And as we got off, there was this area, but this wasn't where we were focusing on. This is where we took off the elevator and headed towards the mine and this underground experience. As we walked into this area of the mine, along the walls and through the center were all types of displays. This place is vast it's enormous and filled with informative displays. Journey through the rock. Okay, here we go. What's in there? What's behind there? I really want to know. Here's a sign on the wall. It says crystal pod. The walls are truly beautiful. And this is a pipe? Well, what do they mean by pipe? It's a chimney? No, it's an intrusion? No, it's a pipe. Can you see it? What it is, is a vertical ribbon, brown and muddy looking, in that in this case runs from the roof down the wall. The 17 foot mud layer doesn't mark the top of the salt layer, however the salt deposit is around 350 feet thick here and our mine is towards the bottom of the deposit. In 1887, land developer Ben Blanchard drilled southwest of Hutchinson looking for oil. Instead, he found salt. For any of you like me who was wondering how did they discover that, that's how. You know, sometimes you wonder like, how did these things get discovered? Well, now we know. It wasn't a cow that fell in a hole. That's a joke because a lot of the caverns in caves, they say that's what happened. But in this case, this guy's digging for oil and he got salt. Rock salt mining officially began in 1923 with the opening of the Cary Salt Mine. Today, the mine measures about two and one half miles north and south by one and one half miles east and west. As of July 2015, the mine had over 900 acres of usable space and more than 150 miles of tunnels. And it grows every year. Simply amazing. This map showed the location of salt deposits, land masses, and tourist attractions related to salt across the world. And here we are in number 12, Hutchinson, Kansas. Let's look at the list. Where have we been? <gasps> look, we see New Iberia and we see Avery Island. Avery Island is where we went to Tabasco and then Grand Saline. We have been to the Salt Museum there in Grand Saline and I will be showing you that at some point in time in the future. Salt secrets. One of them 
is this seahorse? Is that really a secret? So what's the deal with this seahorse? Well, it was formed by smoke that came out of a drill hole after a dynamite blast. Well, there you have it. Both above and below the image there are holes that the miners drilled to put the explosives in when blasting this part of our great room. So that's what this room is called, the great room. It is great. It is so huge. It is so impressive. And this display was kind of fun for the kids that were walking through with us. They were running their hands through this, quote, mud, oversized rock salt. And now here we are. We're standing under Airport Road. That's kind of weird. There are cars driving on top of our head. Well, not on top of our head, but 650 feet above us. There are cars driving right there. That's really um interesting once you start thinking about it. Then in the corner, they had this light show going on. By the way, have you gone to my website, danasbooks.net? There are a lot of videos on there, some recipes, and how to order my books. I have three travel books. And also, I need you to stop and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Thank you. Continuing on, on our tour through the Great Room. There's so much to see and to read and just to take in the beauty of of the walls of this salt mine. I'm not going to take time to read all these signs because we'd all be asleep at that point, but I do just want you to see that there is so much in this museum. It is all extremely well done. And you see this ceiling? You see those chunks taken out and the warning tape? I think that's why we have to have these crazy hard hats on? Look at this car. Early salt mines in Kansas used live mules to pull the salt cars. Shown here is the pre-1928 photo of the American Salt and Coal Mine in Lyons, which is not too far away from Hutchinson. That mine was later purchased by the Kerry Salt Company. Can you see the mule with its legs taped to prevent salt cuts? Mr. Kerry wanted the Kerry Salt Mine to be the most modern and only used electric mules. Things eventually wore out down there. We also learned that everything you saw that was down there was taken down there on that elevator that we rode, and it wasn't that big of an elevator. So how did they get this car in it? They took everything apart. Once things were taken down in the elevator, they had to be reassembled. And you know what they decided? That once things were down there, they weren't going to take them apart to send them back up. It was just too much trouble. On the various rides and walks through this salt mine, we saw a number of vehicles and things that have just been down there for decades, including this red tractor. I would think that one of those tires took up the whole elevator. It just this, this car is just truly amazing, isn't it? Companies promoted and supported the war effort and added slogans and logos to their packaging, such as buy war bonds, V for victory, and friendly reminders to share and conserve wartime resources like fuel. Many such examples of these discarded wrappers have been found in the mine, and they serve as additional proof of the scope of the war in the periods of the salt miners. There was a lot of trash down there. Kind of interesting. And we even saw a commode. Ah! Um, everything that happens in the mine stays in the mine. You know that saying? I think it's more than literal in this case. This display showed the miner's gear. Top equipment for underground work. Each morning, often before sunrise, underground mine supervisor Myron Marcotte underwent a process of transformation when he arrived at the Hutchison Salt Company. Safety was the primary importance in the salt mines. Kind of like these helmets that we're having to wear. Remember, you'll have to wait to see and hear more about the vaults down here. I was so impressed. These photographs showed a miner's life. This doesn't look like a very convenient place to take a seat. The items in this case embody the idea that what goes in the mine stays in the mine. Isn't that what I just said? It is more effective in terms of time and manpower for miners to leave their trash behind when they are finished mining an area and not take it with them or carry it topside. The trash you see in the case in front of you was taken from trash piles in areas mined out in the early 1950s. We found more large equipment on this end of the underground museum. Escapeway? Um, I'm not sure who that's for, but I think we're going to go this way and see more. This place is like endless. Maybe that's why they call it the Great Room. Oh, this is the way to the train. Movie costumes and galleries? Ah, oh, there's got to be so much more to see here. Learn all you want to learn about this industry. Because believe me, they've got so much information on these placards. This has a number one on it. I wonder if this was the first one down there. Who knows? More salt secrets. The holes you might have noticed in the walls are left from the blasting process. Salt miners call them boot holes. Look at this LHD tire. This is a Toyo 24-ply nylon bias tire. Yikes. Don't climb on it. 
Okay, I promise I won't. Can I take this helmet off yet? Look at this saw. You don't want to get in the way of this thing. I hope you're enjoying traveling across America with me. We're at the Stratica, 650 feet below the surface in Hutchison, Kansas. Now we're in the next room, and this room has some clothing and historical photographs of the original mining days and talks about the history of the salt mining in the state. I really love looking at these old photographs. Can you imagine working in there? You really can't think about it. You can't think about the fact that you're 650 feet below ground, and you can't think about the fact that there's only one elevator, and you've walked a great distance away from it. I'm sure they've got all this worked out. It's fine. It's going to be okay. Continuing on. Escapeway. Quit reminding me. Hey, a photo place. Take your picture in an original 1954 ore car. Okay. Hi. More salt secrets? Oh, they're talking about the blast marks here. And the little arch to the right is a remnant of an incomplete blast. Okay. Continue to the right, to the end of the fence. Oh, wait, there's a photo op. Another photo op. Two photo ops just right here in the museum? Bend down to look through this drill hole. Have fun taking photographs through this drill hole. We did. And behind that fence? I think that's going to be a train ride. I hope this is included in our ticket. I don't know. We'll see. It's 10 till 2. We've been down here for 50 minutes. Wow, time's flying. This is the Salt Mine Express. Rules. Watch your step. From the gate to the train, loose rock, surface, maybe, I don't know, maybe unstable. Board and exit the train on the left side. Board and exit the train. Da, da, da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The train's going to make five stops. Do not stand or exit the train. Keep hands and feet inside. You know the routine. Next departure. Um, I'm not sure what this clock is saying, but I think it's going to be in six minutes, maybe. We're supposed to sign up for the train right at the table. Okay. I guess this is when we find out if we're getting on. We have to be back five minutes before departure. I think we can go into the vault a little bit. No, no, we'll just wait. We'll just wait. Please sit in chairs provided and wait for the conductor. Okay, this is when I popped off that helmet. And this is when they came to me and said, you need to put your helmet back on, ma'am. I was like, ay, ay, ay. Okay, I think we're going to have a train full. I wonder if we're going to be able to go on the dark ride. I think so. I don't know. I didn't even know we were going to be able to ride the train. I think that's our conductor. Oh, aren't those beautiful little chairs on this train? All aboard! I think photography on this part is going to be a little difficult. Well, that was a lot of fun. Now, let's head to the secured area. And this is the part that you've been waiting for and I've been waiting for. But after we go through the secured area and learn all about the vault, you're going to want to know what we saw on the dark train ride. So there's lots more to go. These information signs tell all about the history of this underground vault. They're housing all kinds of wonderful information to keep it safe. From magazines to records like this. 1962 Life magazine about the Cuban Missile Crisis. You know, I always wondered if anybody was keeping track of these things and where they would be safe, and now I know. And look at this. Things have changed since the 1960s. Oh, that's an understatement, wouldn't you say? Oh, they have these Time magazines and Mad magazines in storage. And this displays the underground expansion that took place in 1999. And it looks like they have a lot of the information about the Oklahoma City event. And of course, the New York event. And hurricanes? This place is amazing. Motion pictures? Send it to the salt mine? This phrase is common in Hollywood's post-production circles. Years ago, film studios realized that the unique atmosphere, depth, and security of this facility provides protection that is second to none. Amazing. Legacy lost. Nearly every pre-1970 episode of The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson has been lost to history. Standard procedure at the time was to reuse the expensive videotape recording media each night. Wow, they just ran right over it, kind of like a security tape. There is no surviving copy of the first night's broadcast. Oh, 
50% of the films made before 1950 no longer exist. Less than 20% of American-made silent films survive in complete form. Humidity and heat, warehouse fires, and proper labeling and handling have caused irreparable damage. And they're showing movie posters from The Wizard of Oz and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. That's not the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory I saw, but this was really neat. They have four of the Wonka bars that were used as props. Animations, oil and gas data, and this is why this place is so important. Oops! An employee's mistake erases Alaska state records worth $38 billion. With no backup tapes, employees spend three months and $200,000 rescanning paper originals. They had this big display about the IBM computers, and some of my older viewers will recognize a lot of this stuff. A lot of you younger people don't even know what a floppy drive is. It's really quite intriguing, and it talks about the history of, like, in, in 1887, train conductors punched tickets with information about passengers. In 1951, the Univac mainframe was the first commercial computer made in the U.S., and then they show in 1964, this like real, real track thing. And then 1972, the floppy disk. How many of you remember that? Raise your hand if you ever dealt with a floppy disk. I don't remember the whole 1972 thing. I'm not sure it was available to the public in 1972. And then they're saying that in 1982, the optical disk was originally developed. The underground vaults and storage. Truly amazing. There's more. Keep watching. Then in 1984, cartridge tapes. And then in 1996, media gets smaller. It truly is incredible how things have changed over the decades. I wonder what the future holds. Uh, well, this is way back in time, isn't it? This is the New York Herald. Our loss, the great national calamity, death of the president. April 1865, the death of a president. The day after President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, this newspaper rolled off the press. For decades, it was stored underground in ideally cool, dry, dark conditions. In the 1990s, UVNS acquired the paper and displayed it above ground. Display lights, higher humidity, and temperature fluctuations during that period, the more than 140-year-old paper is still in remarkably good condition. That is Wonderful. More information that they hold about earthquakes, common disasters, tornadoes, hurricanes, disaster protection. All this information is being stored down here. Why are millions of reels, data tapes, and boxes in a Kansas salt mine? Think Fort Knox. Miles from disaster, 650 feet below the surface, within 400 feet of solid rock. And this is the original Dorothy from the movie Twister. You just gotta love this place. This is A. Dorothy from the 1996 Warner Brothers film Twister. Named after, of course, Dorothy from the classic The Wizard of Oz. Things from all over the world and nation are shipped here to be protected in the underground vaults and storage. And you thought this was a salt mining tour? Well, it is. This is the original security gate from the underground front entrance. This video shows the design of the underground storage. And here are samples of things that are saved down there. Warner Brothers Television. It's just box after box after box. And then what's this on this side? Tools of the trade in a pre-digital world. Peek inside an editing lab, also known as the cutting room, in Hollywood a few decades back, and you would have seen a setup like what is displayed before you. From the earliest days of movie making in the 1920s, through the golden age of film and up to the 1990s and the advent of the digital age, all film was edited on equipment just like this. And that's neat. They just have this piece of equipment down there for preservation. And in this environment, it's staying perfectly safe. And look at these films. The names are listed on the side. And more boxes. After box. After box. Have you subscribed yet? If not, why not? I've already asked like twice. Can you please subscribe? Thank you. And thanks for watching so far. Hasn't this been interesting? We were truly amazed at this tour. And it didn't really cost all that much for all that we're getting to see. And I think we have another ride coming up soon. Boxes. Reels. It's amazing. Clothing from movies. Here we go. It's time for the dark ride. Emerson Carey be been digging. A shaft to this salt to this salt bait in 1923. He completed that shaft. And first thing to know, the Ritz rail line he developed became known as the lifeblood of this mine. They operated this rail line for 60 years in 1983. They abandoned this rail line and they went to the conveyor belt system, which is still. Yay! 
the guy who was our train conductor on this, he says that the ones of them that were working that day, it's called Geezer Day because on Tuesdays, these older gentlemen volunteer to work the museum as guides. Thank you, geezers. So if you go on Tuesday, say hi to the geezers. Be nice to them. As we traveled through, the geezer explained different things that we were seeing. And one of them was these high explosives. Look at all these boxes of explosives. I guess they had to blast out a lot to get through this salt so they could work. This was truly amazing. They found one way to block off areas of the mine was to put these boxes to block areas that they no longer needed to go down. See the salt? Ventilation was also important and they used fans and all kinds of other different pieces of equipment to try and keep air circulating well through the mine. And remember when I told you that they take vehicles down piece by piece? Well, this was one of those examples and it served its purpose and was worn out and it just stayed right there. Well, actually it didn't stay right there. That's not true. The old geezer, he said that they found this and they drug it there to put it on this dark train tour so that we could all enjoy and see this vehicle. We were able to stop and pull off some salt and they had little bags available for everyone to be able to keep a piece or as many pieces as they wanted to fill their bag full of salt. And the children on the tour loved this part. There were also various stops that we were able to get out and walk around the mine on the dark tour. This was such a great place to visit. I hope you can go sometime. Those boxes were empty. <gasps> Look, local fire emergency phone. Oh wait, there is a way we can communicate with up top. Yay! You know what's crazy? My phone was working. Not sure how that was possible. Here's the big pile where all the kids climbed on to get some samples and just to be able to dig and play around on the rocks. Now, do you remember me telling you about those people had paid that extra to do the safari? Well, two of the girls that were sitting in front of us on this dark tour, well, when we were in this area, this girl had this big piece of salt, like almost the size of her hand. I was like, wow, I didn't think about taking one that big. She goes, Oh, we got this on the other tour. So that was one of the benefits of uh, going and paying extra is that you went to a different part of the mine and you were able to keep a larger piece of salt. Once we got off the dark train ride, one of the workers there came and told us that if we didn't get out in the next 10 minutes, that we would have to stay till four o'clock. And that was like 45 more minutes. And it's like, no, I'm done. Let's go. So we grabbed a few pictures of some more artifacts and headed back to the elevator so we could get up and get out of there and not have to wait another 45 minutes. We chose to go ahead and snap a few pictures and hoof it on back down to the elevators, which was quite a ways down through that great room. And we learned that this number one wasn't number one for this mine. It was number one for another salt mine. They just didn't scrape the number off. Why would they? I had to stop and take like one little quick picture of this showing the different types of salt. Come on, let's go. We got to get to the elevator. We want out of here. Okay, I'm coming. I got to snap a few pictures on the way back to the elevator. Oh, and you can take your photo here and you'll look like a worker. Ah, and we found these stalactites hanging on the metal support here. We're waiting for the elevator. There's going to be more of us crammed in this time, I think. There's quite a few of us that don't want to be stuck down here for another 45 minutes. And now we're outside. It's a beautiful day, but it's so windy. It's been so windy the last couple of weeks. Stratica, Kansas Underground Salt Museum. And now there's still a few more things. Hang on, I'm almost done. There's two displays out here I want you to see. And this sign. Salt was discovered in Reno County, September 27, 1887, approximately 90 rods to the west. You'll have to Google that, won't you? Visit the historical salt discovery site in South Hutchison, Kansas. This 1887 discovery began the development of the Reno County salt industry. I think that's where we are. You are here. See Airport Road on the map? Remember we were standing under Airport Road? This is old number two. On your visit, you'll have to read the sign to find out the history of old number two. And the salt bucket was extremely interesting. Signs around the salt bucket gave important statistics about what this contraption was all about. You don't want to miss everything they have to offer at Stratica. Kansas Underground Salt Museum, 650 feet below ground, tennis shoes on the ground and underground. Unclassic road trip. Travel across America with me. Hope you've enjoyed. Thank you.